What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. So this video is going to be a little bit longer because there's shit we got to get through. So if you need to grab a snack or take a dump or do whatever you got to do, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're going to jump straight into this. Okay, so in order to solve these by completing the square, you basically have to have a perfect squared trinomial right here for your quadratic. And in case you're not familiar with what that is or if you need a refresher on it, I'll link a video to that in the card above. But basically, the way you know if this is a perfect squared trinomial or not is when you factor this, right? So if we factored this, we'd have two sets of parentheses, right? Both of these sets of parentheses would have the exact same thing, okay? So for example, in this one right here, we could actually factor this, right? Because here we have an x squared, so we put an x there and an x there. Here we have negative 48, right? So what two numbers can we multiply together to get negative 48, but also add up or have a difference of positive 8? Well, that would be positive 12 and negative 4, right? So here we could have a positive 12 and a negative 4, okay? So as you can see, we don't have the exact same factors here, right? Here we have an x plus 12. Here we have an x minus 4. So that means this is not a perfect square trinomial. So how the hell do you solve this by completing the square? Okay, so what we would have to do in this case is actually just move this number right here, this 48, to the other side, to this side, okay? So I'm going to add 48 to both sides, right? So here they cancel out. And we're just left with x squared plus 8x is equal to 0 plus 48, which is just 48. Okay, now, remember, the quadratic equation is this one right here, right? x squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, okay? So as you can see here, we have a leading coefficient of 1, right? Here we have another leading coefficient b, and then we have this plus c part, right? This plus constant, just this plus number, okay? So as you can see, we have the exact same thing right here, right? We have this x squared, right, with a leading coefficient of 1. We have our bx, but we're missing the plus c part. All right, so let's go find it. So what we're going to do here is just rewrite your equation as x squared plus 8x, and then we're going to put plus, and then just leave this space right here, right, because this is where we're going to put our constant, our c, our number, and it's equal to this number right here, 48. And remember, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other, right? So if we're going to add this number right here, we have to add that same number on this side also, okay? Now, how do you find that number that goes there? Well, that's a great question, young Padawan, I'll tell you right now. So the equations that you can use, and they're both going to give you the same answer, is 1 half times b in parentheses squared, or you could use b over 2 squared, okay? And these b's right here, these b's, are basically the b from your quadratic equation right here, right? So this leading coefficient that's next to your x, right? So in this case, the leading coefficient that's next to the x is this 8, right? Or you could also pull it from here, right? But it's still 8. So in either case, you're going to plug in an 8 for b right here. And then when you solve this, that's what you're going to plug into your empty spaces right here, okay? So we can do that, right? So this is going to be equal to 1 half times 8, right? That's what we're plugging in for b times 8. And then we're going to square this whole thing, okay? Now, 1 half times 8, that's equal to 4, right? So then here we're going to have 4 squared, which is equal to 16, okay? So 16 is what we're going to plug in right here and right here. Okay, cool. So now that we found our number, now we can simplify this, and then we're going to factor it to solve for x. Okay, so first let's simplify this. So we're going to have x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to 48 plus 16, which is equal to, count on your fingers if you have to, 64. Okay, now here again we have a quadratic, right? But now this is a perfect square trinomial, which is exactly what we're looking for. All right, so now when we factor this, some math and magic happens, right? So let's factor this. So first of all, we have an x squared right here, right? So we'll have an x there and an x there. And then here we have a 16. So what two numbers can we multiply together to get 16, but they also add up to positive 8? Well, it would be a positive 4 and a positive 4, right? So here we're going to have plus 4 and plus 4. Okay, and remember, this whole thing is still equal to that number right there, 64. Okay, so as you can see, now we got the exact same factors, right? We got an x plus 4 here and an x plus 4 here. So this is great because now we can rewrite this as x plus 4 squared, okay? And then this is going to be equal to 64. And let's scroll down to get some room right here. Okay, that's good. Now, in order to solve for x right here, first we need to get rid of this exponent, okay? Now, the way you do that is by taking the square root of this whole thing, okay? And remember, what you do to one side, you do to the other, right? So we have to take the square root of this side also. All right, so then on this side, this square root, or this radical, and this squared exponent basically just cancel each other out, and then we're just left with this right here, the x plus 4. 
okay? And then that's equal to the square root of 64, which is 8, right? But remember, when you take the square root of a number, your answer can be positive or negative, right? So our answer, again, the square root of 64 is 8, but it can be positive 8 or negative 8, okay? So you basically get two answers right here. Now, since we got two answers right here, we can basically split this into two equations to solve for x, okay? So the first equation is going to be x plus 4 is equal to positive 8, right? That's one of our answers. And the other one would be x plus 4 is equal to negative 8, right? That's our other answer, All right? So then to solve for x right here, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides, right? Here, these 4s cancel out, and we're left with x is equal to 8 minus 4, which is equal to 4, okay? And then over here, we, again, solving for x, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides, Okay, these cancel out, and we get x is equal to negative 8 minus 4, which is equal to negative 12. All right, so then there's your two answers right there. x is equal to 4, and x is equal to negative 12. All right, let's try another one. Okay, so here we have p squared minus 18p plus 6 is equal to 0. All right, so again, this is not a perfect squared trinomial. All right, so we want to move our number again to the other side. So here we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So those cancel out, and we're left with p squared minus 18p is equal to 0 minus 6, which is negative 6, okay? So again, as you can see, we have basically our x squared, we have our bx, but we're still missing our plus c part, right? So that's what we got to figure out now. So we're going to rewrite this as p squared minus 18p plus some number right here is equal to negative 6 plus that same number, okay? And remember, in order to find that number, you can just plug it into this equation right here, 1 half b squared, or you can plug it into b over 2 squared, right? They both work the same way. This time, let's use this one. Okay, and remember this b right here is the leading coefficient that's next to the single x, right? Or in this case, we're using p's, so the leading coefficient that's next to the single p would be right here, negative 18, right? Make sure you include that sign right there, right? So b right here is going to be equal to negative 18, and then that's over 2, right? And then this whole thing is squared, right? So negative 18 over 2, that's equal to negative 9, right? So here we have negative 9 squared, which is equal to 81, okay? So then 81 is what we're going to plug in here and here, okay? So cool, we found our number again. So now let's simplify this. So we're going to have p squared minus 18p plus 81 is equal to negative 6 plus 81, which is 75, okay? Cool, so now we have our perfect squared trinomial. That's what we like, that's what we're always looking for. All right, so now we can factor this, right? So we're gonna put our parentheses there. So here we have a p squared, okay? So we're gonna have a p there and a p there. And then here we have 81, okay? What two numbers can we multiply together to get 81 and add up to negative nine? So that'd be a negative nine and a negative nine, right? So here we're gonna have minus nine and minus nine. Okay, and as you can see, these are the exact same, right? So we know we did it right. And again, this is equal to 75. Okay, so now p minus 9 times p minus 9, again, I can rewrite that as p minus 9 squared, and this is equal to 75. Okay, so again, we're trying to solve for p right here, so first we need to get rid of this exponent, so we're going to take the square root of both sides, okay, so then over here, again, these cancel out, so we're just left with p minus 9 is equal to the square root of 75, but remember, it's the positive or negative square root of 75. Now, 75, that's not a perfect square, but we can break it down, right? The square root of 75, we can break down into the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, okay? And then the square root of 25, that's equal to 5, so we get 5 root 3. Okay, so then right here, we're going to get positive or negative 5 root 3. And we'll just keep scrolling. All right, so again, we got two answers, right? So we can split this into two equations if you want to simplify it as much as possible. So we'll split it into p minus 9 is equal to positive 5 root 3, and we'll do p minus 9 is equal to negative 5 root 3, okay? So first of all, over here, uh, solving for p, we're going to add 9 to both sides, right? They cancel out right there. So we get p is equal to positive 5 root 3 plus 9, okay? We can't combine that or simplify that anymore, so that would be one of your answers right there, okay? And then over here, same thing, solving for p, we're going to add 9 to both sides, okay? So these cancel out, and we get p is equal to negative 5 root 3 plus 9, okay? And again, we can't combine that in any way, so that would be your other answer right there. Okay, so here we have n squared is equal to 3n plus 11, right? So remember, you always want to have it in this form right here, x squared plus bx plus c, right? 
So you always want the x squared and the bx to be next to each other, right? So here, they're obviously on opposite sides of the equal sign. So I'm going to move this 3n to that side over there. Okay, and we're going to do that by subtracting 3n from both sides. Okay, so then on this side, we're going to have n squared minus 3n is equal to, and then on this side, they canceled out, right? And then we're just setting that equal to 11 right there. Okay, so again, we are missing our c right here, right? So in order to fill that in, we're going to rewrite this as n squared minus 3n plus some number is equal to this number right here, 11 plus that same number, okay? And in order to find those, again, you can use this formula right here. So 1 half b squared, okay? And in this case, our b, right, the number that's next to the x, or in this case, the n, would just be this number right here, right? Uh, right here, negative 3. Okay, so we're going to plug in a negative 3 for b right there. So we're going to have 1 half times negative 3, right? And then again, this whole thing is squared. Okay, so 1 half times negative 3, that's equal to negative 3 halves. Right? So negative 3 halves, and then we're squaring this whole thing. Okay, now remember the way you apply this exponent to a fraction is that you take this exponent and you apply it to everything that's inside of your parentheses, right? So you apply it to the 3, so we're, we'll have 3 squared, and you apply it to the 2 down here. So we'll have 2 squared. Okay, so then we can simplify this. So 3 squared, that's equal to 9, and 2 squared, that's equal to 4, right? And remember, this has a negative sign on it, but a negative times a negative is equal to a positive, right? Because we're squaring it. So our answer right here is going to be positive 9 fourths. Okay, so then we're going to have a positive 9 fourths right there and a positive 9 fourths right there. Okay, so now let's simplify this. So we're going to have n squared minus 3n plus... 9 fourths is equal to 11 plus 9 fourths. Ugh, fractions, I know. Okay, so in order to add these together, they have to have the same denominator. Okay, so 11, right, 11, we have to multiply by 4 over 4, right, because now it'll have the same denominator as this one right here, right, 4. So on top, we have 11 times 4, which is equal to 44. And on the bottom, we just have a 4. Okay, so 11 is the same thing as 44 over 4. Okay, so if I'm going to add these together, I'm going to have 44 over 4 plus 9 fourths. Okay, so 44 plus 9, that's equal to 53. And on the bottom, uh, we just have a 4. Okay, so then this whole thing reduces down to just 53 over 4. 53 over 4. Okay, now we have our perfect square trinomial, right? It doesn't look like it because we have a fraction, but it is. Okay, so we're going to factor this to solve for n. Okay, factor it. So we're going to have an n here and an n here. And then what two numbers multiply together to get 9 fourths but add up to negative 3? Well, in this case, it would be a negative 3 halves and a negative 3 halves. Okay? And remember, this is equal to this fraction right here, 53 over 4. So remember, we have the exact same factor right here, right? So we can rewrite it as n minus 3 halves squared. And that's equal to our fraction right here, 53 over 4. Okay, now in order to solve for n right here, again, we have to get rid of this uh, exponent. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, so then on this side, remember these cancel out. And then we're just left with n minus 3 halves is equal to plus or minus the square root of 53 over 4. Okay, now one way we can simplify this square root right here is by basically splitting it the top from the bottom. So we can write it as the square root of 53 over the square root of 4. Okay, and then we can simplify this as the square root of 53 and the square root of 4 is just 2, right? So we get the square root of 53 over 2. So then this right here we can simplify to plus or minus the square root of 53 over 2. Okay, so again we have two answers, right? We have positive square root of 53 over 2 and negative square root of 53 over 2. Okay, so we have to split this into two equations. So we're going to have n minus 3 halves is equal to the positive square root of 53 over 2, and n minus 3 halves is equal to the negative uh, square root of 53 over 2, okay? Now, I'm going to have to scroll down again, oh my god. Okay, so in order to solve for n on this one, we're going to have to add 3 halves to both sides, okay, add 3 halves. So then on this side, they cancel out, and we're left with n is equal to the square root of 53 over 2 plus 3 halves. And we can actually, since we have the same denominators, we can actually combine the tops together. So we can write it as the square root of 53 plus 3 all over 2. Okay. 
So then can't simplify that anymore. So then this is one of your answers. And then this one over here, uh, again, to solve for n, we're going to have to add three halves to both sides. Okay. So then here they cancel out and we get n is equal to negative 53 square root of 53 over two plus three halves. Okay. And again, we have the same denominators. So we can again, combine the tops right here. So we could write it as the negative square root of 53 plus three all over two, right? And there's your other disgusting answer. Okay, so here we have x minus three in parentheses times x plus five in parentheses is equal to nine. And you're like, what the fuck is this? Okay, so what you have to do here first is actually foil this, right? Because this isn't even a quadratic because it's basically split up, okay? So all you have to do again is foil. So we're gonna go first. So x times x is x squared. We're gonna go outer. So we're gonna go uh, x times five, so plus five x. We'll go inner, so negative three times x, so minus three x. And then we'll go last. So negative three times five is equal to negative 15. And again, that's equal to nine, right? Okay, so here's our quadratic. Now we found you. So we're gonna have, simplifying this, x squared. And then here, positive five x minus three x is equal to positive two x, right? So plus two x. And then minus 15 is equal to nine, okay? Now again, this is not a perfect square trinomial. So we have to move this number to that side. Okay, so we're going to add 15 to this side and add 15 to this side. All right, so then we're going to have x squared plus 2x is equal to 9 plus 15, which is equal to 24. Okay, cool. So looking good so far. Now remember, we need to add our plus c right here, right? So we can rewrite this as x squared plus 2x plus our number right there. And that's equal to 24 plus that same number. Okay, now in order to find that C, sneaky little C, we'll plug it into this equation right here. So one half times B squared. Okay, now in this case, what's B? Well, B again is just the number that's next to the X. So in this case, it's a two, right? So we're gonna plug in a two for B right there. So one half times two, right? And then that whole thing squared. Okay, so one half times two is just equal to one. So then one squared is just equal to one. Okay, so we're just gonna plug in a one right there and a one right there. Okay, cool. So now we have our perfect square trinomial. So now we can simplify everything and then factor this, right? So we're going to have x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 24 plus 1, which is 25, All right? And now in order to factor this, we can do that, right? So we're going to have an x there and an x there, and then two numbers that multiply to 1 and add up to 2 would just be positive 1 and positive 1, right? So then that's equal to 25. Okay, now again, we have the same factors, right? So we can rewrite this as x plus one squared, and that's equal to 25. Okay, we'll scroll some more. Now, in order to get rid of this two, again, we're gonna take the square root of this whole thing and take the square root of this whole thing, okay? So then over here, remember these cancel out. So then we're just left with x plus one is equal to plus or minus the square root of 25, okay? And the square root of 25 is just five, right? So here, we have plus or minus five, okay? So we got our two answers right there. So again, we can split this up into two equations, right? So x plus one is equal to positive five and x plus one is equal to negative five, all right? So to solve for x right here, we'll subtract one from both sides. So then we get x is equal to five minus one, which is four, okay? And then on this side, again, solving for x, we're gonna subtract one from both sides. So then we get x is equal to negative five minus one, which is negative six, all right? There's your two answers, boys and girls. All right, last one. So here we have three x squared minus 12 x minus 15 is equal to zero. Okay, so as you can see, we don't have a leading coefficient of one over here, right? We have a three. So we need to get rid of it. So we're going to divide this whole side by three. And remember what you do to one side, you do to the other, right? So we have to divide this side by three also. Okay, so over here, three divided by three is just equal to one. So then we'll basically have one x squared. So we can just write that as x squared. Here, negative 12 divided by three, that's equal to negative four. So we'll have negative four x, right? So negative four x. And then here, negative 15 divided by three is equal to negative five. So we'll have minus five is equal to zero divided by three, which is just zero, okay? Now again, this is not a perfect square trinomial, all right? So we have to move this five to this side over here. So we're gonna add five to both sides. Okay, so we get x squared minus four x is equal to positive five. Uh, there we go, positive five, okay? So again, you can see that we're missing our plus c right here, our poor little plus c. 
Okay, so let's make some room for that cute little C that keeps running away for some reason. And this is going to be equal to 5, right, plus that same space right there. Okay, so in order to find C, again, uh, let's do it over here. You can plug it into this equation right here, right? 1 half B squared, and that's equal to 1 half. Now, in this case, what's B? Whoa. In this case, B is going to be equal to, remember the number that's next to your X, so negative 4, right? So we're going to plug in a negative 4 right there for B. And remember, this whole thing is squared. So half of negative 4 is equal to negative 2, right? So then here we're going to have negative 2 squared. And negative 2 squared is equal to positive 4. Okay, so we're going to have positive 4 right there and right there. Okay, so now that we have our perfect square trinomial, now we can simplify and factor, right? So we're going to have x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 9. Okay, so factoring this right here, we're going to get parentheses first of all, and then we're going to have x right there and there. And the two numbers we're going to plug in right here are going to be minus 2 and minus 2, right? Because we have a minus 4 right there. Okay, and then this is equal to positive 9, all right? Now again, we can rewrite this as x minus 2 squared is equal to 9. Okay, now remember we're trying to solve for x, right? So we'll take the square root of both of these. So then over here, we're just going to be left with x minus 2 is equal to, right here, plus or minus the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is just 3, so we're going to get plus or minus 3. Okay, so I got my two answers. So again, I can split this up into two equations, right? So x minus 2 is equal to positive 3, and x minus 2 is equal to negative 3. Okay, so then to solve for x, we'll add 2 to both sides. Okay, so we'll get x is equal to 3 plus 2, which is 5. And over here, uh, solving for x, we'll add 2 to both sides. Okay, so we get x is equal to negative 3 plus 2, which is equal to negative 1. All right, we just completed all the losers. There's all your squares. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out, and I'll see you there.